Hi everybody, welcome back to Synthetic Biology 1. Last time, we made a quick and dirty model of transcription. We only looked at the mRNA levels, and we decided that, in the steady state, the mRNA concentration would be equal to the production rate divided by the degradation rate. Now, in order to reach that conclusion, we had to make what's called a steady state assumption. We set the derivative of the mRNA concentration to zero, which allowed us to calculate a simple solution using just algebra. But this, of course, is still only half the story. The central dogma tells us that DNA makes RNA, and then RNA makes protein. Usually, it's the protein that we're interested in. RNA can do some neat stuff, we love RNA, but protein is the real meat of the cell. So, let's fulfill the central dogma. How can we add proteins to this model? We need to write a differential equation for dpdt, the rate of protein production in a cell. What can we say about protein production? Like we did for transcription, we will squeeze all of the complexity that we can from the system to produce the simplest possible framework. Protein is made from mRNA, and we'll assume that each mRNA is able to generate protein at a constant rate. We call this rate beta, and we use the subscript P to remind ourselves that we're talking about the protein production rate, not that other beta that we used for mRNA. Now we need a degradation term. Just like we discussed with mRNA, protein can be degraded by the cell or diluted away when the cell grows. We use the term alpha sub P to represent the loss of proteins from the system and we multiply this term by p to indicate that the loss of the protein scales with how much protein that you have. So you can imagine that when a cell divides in two, we don't lose a specific number of proteins, we lose half, half of the proteins, half of whatever protein concentration there was before. In physics, this is called a first order process, when we write a rate equation with a constant times one of our variables. Like always, we're keeping in mind our physical units. P has units of protein concentration. Alpha P has units of 1 over time. mRNA has units of mRNA concentration. And beta P has units of protein per mRNA per time. Note how, when you multiply them out, each of our terms has the same units. Proteins per time, proteins per time, proteins per time. We know we're allowed to add and subtract them because they're all the same thing. Just like we did with RNA, we can solve this for the steady state protein levels. We set the left hand side to zero, do a little algebra, and we'll find this expression. We care about the protein production and degradation rates and the mRNA level. We know from last time that the steady state mRNA level is just the ratio of the mRNA production and degradation rates. As synthetic biologists, we have ways to alter all of these parameters. Two of them align very well with our four modules of gene expression. The mRNA production rate, beta m, corresponds well with the promoter of the gene. We can change or mutate the promoter sequence to alter beta m. Similarly, the protein production rate is largely controlled by the ribosome binding site. If we need to change these terms in our designs, we know where in the DNA sequence to look. Protein and mRNA degradation rates can be changed too, although we'll have to go beyond our four basic modules to find the tools that can affect them. This is the simplest model of gene expression that I know, but still it tells us a lot. We took one very important quantity, the concentration of a protein, and rewrote it as a function of four processes that control it. At least two of these processes we can associate with the basic modules of gene expression, and therefore figure out their rough location in a real DNA sequence. Okay, until next time everybody, you will always be alpha in my heart.